Once an Avenger is a great example of a hero mission, a single player campaign experience focusing on a specific playable character. Hero missions give us a chance to tell more of each hero's story and showcase the variety and depth of our hero designs. Let's take a quick look at how Thor plays. With the game's combat systems, players can string together combos of heavy and light attacks or hold for signature attacks. Combat versatility is one of Thor's strengths. From making use of Mjolnir to pin enemies from a distance or bringing the sky down on his foes. In addition to core combat moves, the God of Thunder has a wide variety of skills to unlock that give him access to classic moves. This is one of our favorites, manual targeting. We largely drew our influence from writer Jason Aaron's run on the Mighty Thor comic. Manual targeting allows you to quickly mark your enemies for bullseyes with Mjolnir, and one by one, you can mark them and knock them down as Mjolnir comes back to you. Follow that up with a powerful ground pound and you've got a mighty combo. Manual targeting is a great ranged attack, but if up close and personal is more your style, go with the hammer spin or Mjolnir Cyclone. Heroes have three special heroic moves, Assault, Ultimate, and Support. When designing our heroics, we started with the signature moves from the comics and movies that we've always wanted to play. The Assault Heroic charges the fastest, and in some cases, you can store multiple charges to use strategically as a part of your combos. You can perform these after charging your heroic meters with normal attacks. For instance, Natasha's Assault Heroic is Widow's Bite, which is an electroshock projectile move you might recognize. You can see Nat using it right here. Each hero also has a unique support heroic that's designed to enhance co-op and team play. For example, Thor's support, Warrior's Fury, lets him channel the power of the gods to supercharge his Odin Force and grants a period of invulnerability for nearby team members. You can see this in action when Iron Man gets the buff as he flies through Thor's support. Ultimates take longer to charge, but they're definitely worth the wait. They have more screen clearing power and some even have residual effects like Thor's Bifrost Ultimate. Thor's ultimate heroic channels the power of the Nine Realms and his Bifrost taps into Muspelheim to bypass unbreakable shields, allowing Thor to use the power of the Bifrost Bridge to do maximum damage. We know everyone plays differently, so we have melee, ranged, aerial, and ground combat skills to tailor your hero to your playstyle. As your heroes earn experience, they gain access to new skills. Skill points allow you to unlock new moves, combos, and even new versions of attacks. As you build up your heroes, you begin to see how unlocking and mastering the separate core skills offers a ton of depth and variety on its own for every hero. And that's before gear, perks, artifacts, and any kind of later game progression. So why is all of this important? Because it means your Thor will play differently than my Thor, and my Hulk will play different than yours. Another way to customize your heroes is with gear. We've previously talked about the different rarities and how perks will give you powerful modifiers for even more customization. Some perks apply special damage like plasma or gamma, or cause status effects like shrink, which will shrink enemies and reduce damage and defense. You can see Iron Man using gamma gear in this shot, and eagle-eyed fans probably noticed his laser sweep was green instead of red. Nope, that wasn't a bug. When you have gamma gear equipped, it grants a bonus damage modifier and changes the emissive color of your attack. And voila, green lasers. We know that if you look good, you'll play good. The Crystal team has really enjoyed creating all new outfits for these heroes and drawing from Marvel's 80-year history to bring so many classic outfits to the game. Each hero has dozens of outfits drawn from some of the most recognizable eras and story arcs. You can earn them over the course of the story campaign by completing missions and deciphering patterns. There's Iron Man's suit from the 2014 Original Sin storyline or Donald Blake, which is a nod to an alias of Thor's who first appeared in 1962's Journey into Mystery, issue 83, or Tony's Stark Tech outfit that was inspired by the Bleeding Edge armor that first appeared in Invincible Iron Man number 25 in 2010.
While there are a ton of outfits you'll earn just by playing, some will require completing iconic mission chains to earn each hero's iconic outfit. And some outfits will only be available in our online marketplace. You could even customize your attitude and let out your inner Hulk with the right emote. I don't think that's canon. Those are just some of the ways you'd be able to build and spec out your heroes. Okay, I think it's time for another trailer. This one gives us a first look at how all that customization is especially fun when you play together. This is Co-op and War Zones. I can't believe it. The aim is firing on the Air Force. These adaptoids of his, they harvest their powers through the torture of these inhumans. Georgie Boy is gearing up for war. Programmable power under our control. No more heroes. The entire world is in terrible danger. Time is here. I could pull some strings to spruce up the armory. Get ourselves some new toys to play with. Dangerous ones. I'm picking up something in the atmosphere. A derivative of Terrigen. I'm here. Who needs their ass kicked? The very air breathes of dark magic. <laughs> Get this bird in the air before Aim comes looking for us. Jarvis is unencrypting the schematics and we'll get our tech heads on new gear ASAP. Look at all this. Which nation state is Aim planning to go to war with? Heroes are people, and people can be corrupted. Stop them, it's just one more thing to regret on my deathbed. Times like this, it all seems hopeless. That's when we got to stand strong. You want to see powers? Here we go. Time for heroes. It's over. You don't get to decide. So far, we've talked about the story, hero missions, and customization. Now, let's talk about war zones. War zones are missions which you can play with up to a total of four players or solo with an AI companion team made up of your unlocked and leveled heroes. Whether playing hero missions or war zones, you always make forward progress with your heroes. On your helicarrier, you'll use the war table to launch missions with a variety of objectives and challenges. As you saw in the co-op trailer, each mission is grounded in story. So whether you're in the campaign or war zones, you're always working together to stop AIM and rebuild the resistance. You get missions from Jarvis, Maria Hill, Hank Pym, and more characters from Marvel history. Once you pick your mission, you'll board the Quinjet where you can matchmake, switch heroes, choose your loadout, and of course, pick the right look and attitude for the job. As you start playing missions across the globe, you'll realize AIM has entrenched themselves in cities and remote locations alike, all in the name of research. War zones range from wide open spaces designed for exploration and team traversal to dense interiors with a variety of objective-based challenges, boss fights, and rewards. Here's a mission we saw on the co-op trailer called To Tame a Titan, where we can see some team play. There's this cool shot of Iron Man, but you may have missed Kamala and Hulk performing a team finisher on that poor guy back there. When you max out some larger enemies' stun meter, two heroes can come together to perform a team finisher, which gives you a chance to take them down much faster. Teamwork makes the dream work. Living the hero life is all about growth, getting stronger and better equipped to play smarter, and there are plenty of upgrades to help you do just that. As you progress through the campaign, you'll also be rebuilding and upgrading the Chimera, your helicarrier, which is your own flying base. 
The Resistance is a group who have banded together in the five years since A-Day. Some are inhuman and have powers, some are former S.H.I.E.L.D. agents who refuse to pledge allegiance to AIM, and some just want to help. What is this place? We call it the Ant Hill. Not my idea. You'll join their cause in the field by working directly with factions like the Inhuman Alliance and S.H.I.E.L.D. agents Dum Dum Dugan, Nick Fury, and more. Earning faction reputation will give you access to new challenges. Hey, Avengers. Hill has something she needs your help with new vendors, and more powerful items. There will always be new threats on the horizon, so you want to ensure your Avengers are ready for anything. We've talked about a lot today, but that's kind of the point. This is a really big, ambitious game. Marvel's Avengers isn't just a global, high-stakes race to rebuild the Avengers, to save the Inhumans, and uncover the truth about AIM's plans. That's just the beginning. This is a brand new original Avengers single player story that you can enjoy on your own, made the Crystal Dynamics way. But it's also an experience you can play with your friends that will grow as we add new heroes, new regions, and new story, all at no additional cost. Thank you for following us and believing in us. I want to give a big shout out to our community. Thank you for caring and telling us what you think. We're listening, and as fans ourselves, we're all working every day to make Marvel's Avengers worthy of your support. Please stick around after the show to ask questions and chat. On behalf of the whole Marvel's Avengers team, thank you for tuning in to the first Marvel's Avengers War Table. In the coming months, we'll talk about our first post-launch hero, our upcoming beta, and of course, our launch when Marvel's Avengers arrives September 4th. I'm Casey Lynch, and I'll see you next time.